earlier this week on 1UP FM. And now, Anthony Gallegos on Yaddle. So, people that don't watch the episodes like one and two that closely won't notice, but there is like... A lot of Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I say episodes one and two, there is nothing else. You know what I mean? Like, I would I would say the name of this thing first, but Star Wars needs no introduction. All right. Um, but there is a female equivalent of Yoda on the, the Jedi Council. And last week on GFW, all the guys were clowning on her. And they told me ahead of time that that's what they're going to be doing, which is why I wasn't on the show and won't be on any future GFWs because, like, I can't handle that they've just been, like, like they can clown on a lot of shit, but Star Wars I take kind of personally, especially when it comes to Yaddle because one time I got some play from a Primordial Midget. Primordial Midgets are really, really tiny, and she was cosplaying as Yaddle at the New York Comic Con I went to. So I take it kind of on a personal level, especially because, you know, a lot of people don't know that Yaddle's, like, an extra special character, you know, uh... She, 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 like, worked with one of the head of the Jedi Council, and then she suffered a century of imprisonment. This shit's on Wikipedia. It's all expanded universe. <laughs> and uh, so after suffering a century of imprisonment, she was given a temporary seat on the Jedi Council. And then she went and fought after training some really hardcore Jedi Council members. I mean, like, you know, Jedi Knights. She ended up fighting on this planet just prior to the Clone Wars, and she sacrificed herself by absorbing a chemical weapon blast that would have destroyed a city, which Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi were in. So she sacrificed herself, saving Obi-Wan and Anakin, making Episode 3 possible, and, you know, was then replaced by Shock T, who we all know if we all watch the Clone Wars cartoons. Shock T. Plus, you know, I was talking to Sean last night, and it was just pissing me off because he was clowning on uh, Twi'leks, because I told him Twi'leks are like the single most beautiful alien species, and he said that that's retarded, but it's a known fact, like in Star Wars lore, that Twi'leks are just like the most gorgeous girls. Twi'leks being the head tails girls that you see in Jabba's Palace dancing. But yeah, it all comes down to Yaddle. There's been a lot of people after that GFW making some really nasty photoshops of Yaddle milk and shit like that for Sean and I just don't appreciate that I take it very personal so fuck GFW radio and I ain't gonna be on that shit no more you guys don't know shit about Yaddle thank you Anthony for bringing us to life hello and welcome to GFW radio this is the podcast for August 20th 2008 uh if everything just went right with uh, the audio, then what you heard was uh, a clip of Anthony uh, on uh, One Up FM talking some shit about us. And uh, I don't know, Sean, this, is, this, this whole thing is – I thought it was a joke at first. And actually I thought that you were like totally in on it because it just sounds like something you would do. And so I was sort of laughing, and I was, like, kind of laughing at NeoGAF when people were, like, saying, ha-ha, they're kidding around. And then – but what's just weird is, like, I guess he wasn't kidding. Well, and people just, posted on our forums, too, and it's about as true the, – the best analysis I, I've seen yet is that they're comparing Anthony to Isaac uh, Hayes and the whole uh, – thing with south park where when they they made fun of scientology and he kind of flipped out but in this case it's worse because i don't know it i don't want to rip on him because seriously he you know how there's this thing, well, i don't know it's there's like something we, in every every friend you yeah. have in his life there's just this one area that you know you don't tread into it's kind of like everyone i guess i just, it when they're not yeah, there but, i mean but we talk we joke for, about this shit all the time i mean and he's been in on the joke so i don't get why all he, of a sudden he just just decides to be a big fucking crybaby did about you Star did you Wars. know I mean, this though he's got a, a tattoo of a twilight on his arm and when he flexes it he thinks that it makes her look like on. she's dancing you're that's true and also the last time when i was in his car in his back seat he had a plastic lightsaber with like a telescoping blade and that's another fact swear i swear to you that fucking well, lightsaber I, was in his backseat I mean, with the, the half-eaten Taco Bell burrito. I, I never liked that kid anyway. I mean, you know, we have we joke about geeky shit all the time. Like, we're total nerds. We make fun of ourselves. So I don't know why some guy, you know, here who really should have been thankful in a way he was on this podcast. I mean, he was basically just kind of like a nobody, you know, when he first started. And now, you know, he's just like fucking trashing us on some other podcast. And I know we'll be in here and we'll say like fuck retronauts or whatever, but like we're basically kidding. But I mean, he's on on this other podcast. Yeah, that's some kinda... fucking douche who's been here for like six months he saying used fuck to... TFW Radio. And then he got people to know his name, the whole Chuff Love thing, which we like indulged in. And then as soon as like people are familiar with his name, he's like, oh, I'm going to be on the uh, one F- yeah. FM, which is a great show and stuff. But it's like, I mean, there's no reason that he just had to. I mean, I think it might. It's either an excuse. Well, I don't know. He's serious about the Star Wars shit. He did. Is he? Because play. maybe this is part of some, like, I don't know, Andy Kaufman sort of, like, 
you know, faux Andy Kaufman. I wouldn't give him that much credit, but you know, to sort of like clown us, you know, take it to some extreme where where he's fucking around, but maybe he's what still you, fucking around. What's your take on it, Robert? I don't. I I just think that some people are way too serious about their fandom about things. I mean, you see it every day on message boards, people freaking out because you know they find out that two human sucks, or talking shit about Star Trek, or talking shit mm-hmm. about Star Wars, whatever. People come to define themselves by the things that they watch or play or whatever, and it just gets out of control. And I just think he's, you know, he. I think he's just a little too into it. And Ryan. That was that was Robert Ashley. AKA All right, Bob I didn't Edo. do the intros because I'm just a little. Week. This whole fucking soap opera just kind of got me weirded out this week. You know? Yeah, no, he's been he's been taking it hard. You know, Anthony, he's he's my reviews intern. We had to we had to actually move him off because it wasn't working out. Like you mean, took him the, off reviews. Yeah, after the whole Star Wars. So what's he doing that, now? Did you see him? He's back on my cheats again. Wow. Yeah. It, you know, he just a- got we just got an email that went around too from some pissed off reader who was a guy who said he was like 60 something and he was complaining about the crisis walkthrough because which Anthony happened to write and in this walkthrough there's a part that's like, you know, you want to be covert here and then in the walkthrough the next thing it says is like pull out your shotgun and the guy's like since when is a fucking shotgun covert, you know? <laughs> so, so yeah, it's good to know they got him on my cheat. Yeah. yeah. Great. Go, so, uh, go what, on what, do, what do you think of all this, Anthony? I think that the person, like, it's totally being taken out of hand. I mean, fucking sounds like a moron. Like, I was looking through his wallet, and he has a, 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 a thing from Star Wars Insider from when he was a kid. Really? And it says, yeah, it says official Jedi Knight. Holy oh shit, God. that's real. And his fucking chicken this. scratch. Wow. I took that from him. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, the official Star Wars fan club. And he still has it. Yeah. The Star Wars So Inside part of him it. actually still thinks it's yeah, there a was source one, of pride. Yeah, there was one time yeah. I was with him at a concert, and yeah. one of the guys started playing a Star Wars song, and he said, like, the guy on stage was like, are there any Jedi Knights out there? And everyone was like, woo. And Anthony got all pissed and pulled out his actual Jedi Knight card and was like, <laughs> thought all wow. the people were fucking, <laughs> fucking Those full people of are full of it. So it. even big of a loser. Yeah, I mean, not thought. to be mistaken with his, his new, like, 2004 Star Wars Fan Club membership card. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. So, so what do you think we should do with this guy? I mean, do we, should we just forget about him or can we rehabilitate him somehow? Like, you seem to know him more than us. Yeah, but people to reach that stage... Like you're saying with the Taco Bell wrapper and like the lightsaber, like that lightsaber is real. You could vouch for that, right? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely real. As was the happy <laughs> what Taco color, Bell. Burrito. What color is it? It's a red one. It, it, he got it as a gift from a friend, because you know, like does he's, it make sound? He's maniacal enough about it that people buy shit for him because they're like, oh, this is Star Wars, and I found this at a yard sale. He'll like it. Yeah. You know, and the sad thing is that he does. So that's how he. <laughs> 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 that's how we ended up. That's how we ended up with the lightsaber in the back. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Has crazy. he ever? I mean, like the thing. The, 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 the thing about him. The sad thing is, like you know, like. His parents know he's like 25 and everything like that, but when it comes to Christmas, <laughs> it won't be uncommon for like you know some some fucking Star Wars toy to like make it into a stocking. <laughs> <laughs> it might just be like a like a rainbow colored Darth Vader pin, something like that. I mean, wow, it just happens. Has he in his adult life ever purchased like a Star Wars toy for himself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I remember. I, I can remember this time when he was like in Canada and he went out of his way to like. Buy this one figure just because it said the name in French and in English. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait, but that, wait, that made it like more rare, more collectible. Or or something? So he thought, or he could like pimp it in case he met a French girl, like like Doctor Green. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I, that's how I scored. <laughs> yeah. You know, he, he hasn't bought. I mean, he hasn't bought any toys in a while. But when he went to Lucas Arts and they gave him a Lego set. It did stoke his game boner pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, do, is there anything else to be said about about Yaddle? <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know, now, now that we're on this, we could yeah. we could up the insanity by revealing that Ryan Scott doesn't exist. And that he's, <laughs> he's been a character. Yeah, that apparently. Jeff and I yeah. Taken apparently, I'm a. Fitness. That was truly one of the single best PMs we ever got. Let's check out this Ryan Scott impersonation. I'm perfect at it. Okay, here go. Here we go. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so, r- that was a pretty week, good impersonation. R- really quiet. <laughs> last week I got a personal message through one up about Ryan, and they had saw that you had put up a preview on the site, and they saw your byline, 
and they're like, what the hell? It seemed, they seem, I showed it to you, they seem pretty serious, right? Yeah. They're yeah. like, I thought Ryan was like, it's been this running joke that between you and Jeff that you guys, <laughs> <laughs> you just, why, why does he have wow. a byline now? Oh, man. So, so I, I talk so little that my, my existence is in question. <laughs> so, That's uh, fantastic. I, I imagine That's Ryan, sad. I, I imagine Ryan as, you know, that character in an 80s action movie who doesn't say much, but when he mm -hmm. does, it's like of grave importance. Exactly. You know, you're just, you're, that's you're, been his you're role. a man who has economy with words. It's are you talking about like the guy in what was that one one movie where like Rambo? No, he, he ended up <laughs> he ordered French toast. He never talks and he ordered French toast and then the cook the chef like pulled it down the back of his pants and then up under his uh, up through his ass and then under his balls and then pulled the French toast up, <laughs> up from the front of his underwear. And what? they served it in his one line for like you know, an hour was like, it's good. Someone was like, how do you like that French toast? And he's like, it's good. <laughs> so, You're so making this up. Serious? Right that now. was some fucking movie. Was it, I feel like that was... I, don't, I I know what you're talking about with this French toast thing. It Wasn't had that like, like an America's Funniest Home Videos No, video it was like one of those kind of like American Pie type movies, you know? Okay. Uh, um, wow. So, so I don't know. <laughs> so should I read some of the shit to people? The, some of the yellow oh, yeah, stuff? Yeah, save the rap for me. I'll do that one. Yeah, okay. so Anthony posted and... Um, was basically stoking the flames. We wanted this to be as big as when Mo Randy Macho Man Savage split up with his partnership <laughs> with Hulk Hogan over like Elizabeth. Yeah, and so like uh, Anthony I couldn't sleep for a week. Posted, when that happened. you know, on his blog last night about how you know, hey, this is it, this is for real, and he got some feedback he wants to share. <laughs> <laughs> so I got. I'll start with the the PM I got though. So this was a PM that said, "Don't be sore at our boys on the Brodio. They got, and this is how he said it: They got to roll raw, else they lose their street cred." You're a good fit to their little club. Don't quit. You have to forgive, but don't quit. Seriously, though, I hope you're joking. Chuff it out. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Chuff it out. I want a T-shirt that says Chuff, Chuff it, it out. out. Yeah. yeah. All right. Be our new slogan. So then there was another guy. This is Omni Avenger on my fucking blog that said, uh, you said the New York Comic Con? She was awesome. But she must have got around, though, because a buddy and I, he was playing a Wookiee and I, a Rodian, got to know her a little bit better. She did that thing with the half twist while holding a lightsaber and shouting force push. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, by the way, for reference, if you're listening awesome. and you don't know what this is about, in well, you do because you heard the clip. But, yeah, Anthony yeah. said that he got some play from a primordial dwarf who would cosplay as, as Yaddle. <laughs> so, oh, oh, it gets better. It gets better. It gets better for Star Wars fans. So he says, well, you know what happens after that? With some irony afterward, my Wookiee friend and I had an argument about who shot first. We got to hire that guy. That's some. We, that's, we that's just some when we got writing. Ryan talking, the look on his face now says we're not going to hear another one for the rest of the so year. So then there was a, a guy named Para Robot, and his post was titled, Okay, Look. I'm a really big Star Wars fan more than any console or game or anything else. My geekdom started with A New Hope and it will always remain. But come on, even this seems immature. GFW thrives on its ability to go joking on the entire geek world. It's who they are. I was bowled over laughing when they were making up shit just because it was so stupid and funny. But it's only a joke. It's what they do. To react in this fashion, it's real maturity. I thought you were a good addition to GFW, but this is just childish and unbecoming. <laughs> wow. Oh. Uh, but, okay, but this... So I'll just hit up this one and then I'll let you read the rap, which says... uh. I want more info on you saying you got play from a Yaddle cosplay midget, especially after it clearly took all your courage to strike a conversation with a game star chick. <laughs> <laughs> it's because when you're in costume, you've got a lot more guts. You know? Exactly. Like you, right. you can hit on I your mean, role that's play. why people go oh, to it conventions sure. and cosplay. Right, because you're ta not talking yeah, as starts Anthony. on that you're page and goes on to the next. Exactly. Whatever. All right, and then one real fan. And um, then Sean, could you explain your shirt after you do the rap? I can't, there's nothing to be said other than what you see. It's like uh, Janet Reno with uh, a <laughs> <That's Janet> <laughs> crown. Like the head of Janet Reno it's, on well, it's, like it's, an eagle. That's the thing. Is it's, a, it's a harpy. Oh, it is Janet Reno. It's a harpy, though. Yeah. It's a Janet oh, Reno shit. harpy. Let's let's finish up our right, guys. Right, 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 right. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. My Janet Reno uh, <laughs> fetish. All right. So, <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, wow. Kind, kind Galaxy posted like this rap i don't know how it's gonna work because i haven't tried to perform uh, you, you should just read like a poem y'all don't know shit about yaddle six wait point six one meters tall she stood for us all as a jedi master she had grace and wisdom to aid her when left out of episode two due to budget concerns in fanfic level canon she saved the future darth vader 
<laughs> For that the respect of any Jedi she earns, how dare you, div you disgrace a figure so divine. Her legend echoes throughout space and time. The grand battle she died for got one, the greatest story told by scribe Jude Watson. No doubt Sean Elliott is weak as fuck, son. He's never <laughs> felt the fist of puppeteer Phil Eason. Uh, y'all don't know shit about Yaddle. 6.61 meters tall. She stood for us all. <laughs> wow. Those are like some of the best blog comments I've yeah, ever heard. Yeah, those are really great. Good stuff. GFW yeah. listeners are... Uh, this inspired some good creativity. Uh, so let's get this shit out of the way. I was going to say we talk about games. That's coming because we actually have all been playing new releases. Yes, so we we've have got been. like preview material and stuff. But like on the elevator down here... Anthony got an idea how to revive print, or basically how to succeed in the cutthroat print market. And and it was 2008. Wait, do we want to say this on air? Won't no, we be giving we, it away? I mean, who else makes wanna... magazines these days? Um, who else? Yeah, no <laughs> one's gonna try. That's the thing is, you know, we always talking about how we can get new readers, new readers this, and you know, we've been going on this new art direction and, and all competing that. Competing with online. Yeah, yeah, and but the reality of it is, is that there are plenty of people. Maybe they don't have access to online magazines, all they got, but you need to cater to them, and those are prisoners. They are. You look at our, oh, uh, prison you, gamer. You look at our EGM letters, and like ninety percent of them yeah, are like from, are from prison. So I'm just thinking we need to have a like yeah, a, a so shout out. We need to have a, a column written up by a prisoner where he talks about like how he was playing Saints Row before lockdown or something like that. I I used to do EGM hmm. letters, like respond and read EGM letters, like mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, and uh, and it was always amazing to me how many prison letters there were, and they were all of the same kind of like. Man, I remember back when I got to play video games, like oh. Bionic Commando. Man, I love Spy Hunter. Do you still have that, man? Like, I, your magazine <laughs> lot, is like wow. the only thing that keeps yeah. gaming alive for me. So, and it's like all this. So I thought it would be even better to expand this prison concept and do a magazine that's like stuff that prisoners can't get their hands on but want to read about in a magazine. Oh, but I think too, bad. we could have a special column that's like we we only preview games that are coming out 25 years from now. So that they'll be able to play him. we can have them send in. Another thing is that they often submitted in their letters because I did the EGM letters too. They often submitted all this shit about like if I could make a game, this would be my game. So we can have like, oh, that would be rad. Like you know, like you, just a whole page after page of like the games that like the prisoners would be making if you would let them get out of fucking I computer. Can, you know? I can see that feature though. Like the 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 head would be like you know doing twenty five to life is tough, but just think of this way: when you get out, virtual reality will be a reality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, we got to mock this up. <laughs> we got to start doing it. We got to do it. Ryan, how do you feel about that? It's a pretty good idea. Would you be... I'd work on that magazine. Yeah, there you go. You do the reviews of prisoner-made games. Yeah. And that'd probably be a good audience because they're not going to complain that you, you know, like you scored something too low or too high or nah. that, like, you're biased, like... It's like, dude, they'll take your word for it. Hey, Fuck you know me. what? There's <laughs> a game. I'm yeah. bad. It means we'll, I don't have we'll to rate everything on, pa on pack of cigarettes. How many packs my... of cigarettes would you trade for this? <laughs> 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 There's a game coming out for the PC soon called Prison Tycoon 4. Uh, that, that means, seriously? That means they, they were, there was a Prison Tycoon 1 through 3. So, you know. <laughs> Prison Tycoon? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of sad. That game, that game sounds as good as Country Fried Steak Wednesdays in the prison cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I wonder what's in that game. Like, if it has shit where, like, you can run a, a racket by getting drugs in, you know? And, like, <laughs> right. Are you a tycoon within the or, prison walls? Or are you, is it, like... Or you're maybe, becoming a tycoon maybe by you're building one of a like prison. The, the private prison corporations, and you're and you're uh, like, yeah. how little can I spend on a meal so that right, I can right. squeeze another dime out of the public's <laughs> fascination <laughs> yeah. with locking up drug criminals? How many cots can you fit yeah. in a single like space <laughs> by like whatever the fucking <laughs> squat? Wow. The floor plan. That must is. have been the bottom of the tycoon barrel. Yeah. Oh god. Reality. But when you get to the last surprised. level, you get to put together a secret black site prison, and it's like. <laughs> There's also hot fairy shit. godmother tycoon. There is. I'm not making it up. There's a game called Fairy Godmother Tycoon. What does that even Published mean? Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? I fairy I godmothers know. aren't into money. Like who knew that? They're being, like into granting wishes. Guys being a fairy godmother required serious management skills. <laughs> hey, here's here's an update on Prison Tycoon, right yeah. from the internet that we were just talking about. I love the internet. <laughs> so it's yeah. a business simulation game. The objectives are to keep pr the prison running, keep the staff happy, the prisoners in line, all while trying to make money. So it's like, yeah, it must wow. be like a private, huh. private prison. Um, <laughs> oh, jeez. You're able to choose between a New England prison, a modern U.S. Southwestern-style prison, and a West Coast prison modeled after San Quentin. 
The game was released to poor reviews as a result of dated graphics, lack of depth, and replay value. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Prison <laughs> Tycoon was going to be hot <laughs> with just... these graphics of so last gen. The jury just spoke on the fucking gaming, on the gaming press right there, if anything. 25 to life for us, dude. Oh, fuck. So this is what we're going to do, huh? This is our next move, our next career move. Dude, the move. graphics yeah. fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen better shanks, man, could, I'll tell you that. I couldn't, I, couldn't hide, I couldn't hide Playboy in my toilet in a fucking Ziploc bag. Uh. <laughs> so um, now, just like that, we're going to go into game talk. Just That's just how it's going to be. That's how it's going to be. That yeah. was well, game we could actually get into a real argument, Anthony, you and I, instead of a fake one. Over a space seat. Yeah, let's get that out of the way since that's last. Or is that old? News. It's old, but we need to hear it. Is it well, off the shelves already? It just, it's not. Hey, it's not old <laughs> if, you're in, if you're in San Quentin. Bargain bin. <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah I, I guess the thing is that I should make the caveat that I only played like the first five hours, like four. Well, basically, you played all of it then. <laughs> I thought it was cool. What thought, was cool about it? I I thought that the uh, the story as I wrote in a preview that I wrote, I thought the storyline was actually it surprised me with. That I was kind of actually looking forward to seeing the twist that it takes, because like it's, I could see him coming. You know, that's what I mean, the thing. If you've if you've read, you know, or seen any sci-fi in the Don't last no punches, oh thirty or forty years, you know, you might have a clue as to you know the quote-unquote twist. Like, oh my God, maybe that kind of sinister-sounding AI isn't on our side. <laughs> 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 Who, whoever thought of that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I just thought it was a fun point and click action game. I just I didn't quite think it was a was a quite as middling we, as we Jeff need did. we need you to be a little bit stronger in your opinion. <laughs> right now you're you're kind of only so you're straddling the fence. We we need you to be really into the game. Well, I, that's the thing I haven't. Like, yeah, well, is it another thing like your fucking your lightsaber, where it was just there? You f- found it on the street, and so it, you put it. The well, that's how I felt seat. about the game too, though. I mean, I gave it a C. Mm-hmm. In retrospect, I might have given it lower. In fact, when I turned it in, I thought I turned it in as a C minus, but whatever it showed up. Yeah, as a see, C. like I don't know. From what I played, so, I thought it was. It's like yeah, high C B. Yeah, I mean, you beam. can like go through it and you can click on shit and it dies. You buy stuff. I mean, it wasn't yeah. like a disaster, but but what I said in the review was I couldn't believe how utterly mediocre it was from a company that usually tries so much harder. Well, you said it was an action RPG with no. No, like, real loot, no real character leveling up. There isn't. Right? It's not that there's any real. It doesn't exist. There's no character creation. There's no loot at all. There's no uh, character customization, well, per there's se. Loot in I this... mean, it, not even in the no, most, like, true. you get better as you go along in some way, I assume. Yeah, you do. You yes. get to put points into skills. You, get, and... you can put points into two different skill trees that are all... Utterly generic. It's the two but skill also... trees are all passive skills. I mean, every single thing that you like, you work on like beating the shit, and you level up, and it's like, okay, now my choices are: I can get a one percent boost to my two hit, one percent whatever. There's no actual like cool talents. There's nothing to make you right. Wanna... Now I get to whatever do the the fact also that you can level up does not a good game make. I mean, of course, been not. putting that on the back of the box for like. Yes. Every fucking Dynasty Warriors sequel, pseudo sequel, and actually you don't even level up. There's not even levels. It's just right. you reach certain points in the game, and it's like now you get two more points. Right. See, so. but there's also a little bit of character customization in the workbench thing where you get to spend your parts. Like, right. But again, building up your passive abilities and stuff. But but that's the thing. They're all passive. Like you you'll you get a a new weapon. Say <clears throat> you find a weapon on the ground, and then when you get uh. Instead of dropping loot, it drops like generic parts. Literally, that's all it is parts. Okay, so you have one pool of parts. You have like at some point, you'll accumulate like 300. You go to a workbench and then you can spend those points in like leveling up your gun. But all the ways in which you could customize your gun are like, again, 1% 1% damage increase. It's yeah. all like fucking numbers on a spreadsheet. It's like, mm-hmm. dude, you created a sci-fi universe. Where's like, you know, come up with some cool sci-fi shit to attach to the gun or I, give me some, give me something, you I, know? It's like it never made it past the Excel part of the game. It's here, Stronger. Anthony in the background. Stronger. But, uh, but, <laughs> I know. And I, I'm I not like going to let him cut in. I like the game sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, no, no. Ow. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> now the thing is, is that I guess it's like I, I hear Jeff's uh. complaints, and I think they're totally valid. I guess it's like Jeff wanted more RPG, 
and they focus too much on the action. Like they didn't throw in a bunch of loot, so you don't spend all this time in your inventory screen, like scrolling over stats, like which is better. You don't you don't ever stop the game to do that. They didn't add like a huge party system like the old Dungeon Siege games. Mm -hmm. So you don't sit there and be like, I need this guy to attack this, mm -hmm. this guy to attack this. No, you're like instead you're playing and you're like, I'm shooting shit, I'm dodging bullets, I'm throwing grenades. They made they, it another right. day at the office. They made it. Yeah, they, they made did it. make it more actiony. <laughs> but then in that case, I felt like they didn't go enough that way then either. Like the fact that you can't move and shoot at the same time. So right then, to me, that's saying Resident Evil Force is high. <laughs> 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 okay, Jeff, um, you seem touche. to think that this, the is, game... this is like kind of a like a classic video game nerd argument though, kind like of between is. someone yep. who's like. This mediocre game sucks, and the other guy's like, "This mediocre game's pretty fun." Yeah. I hate you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeff, you seem to think that the game failed on a global level because part of the the twist is is that you're able to take cybernetic I enhancements at, at the price of your own humanity, or you're yeah. able to like upgrade this android or something that accompanies you. Right. But having upgraded yourself with all the taking the, the right. cybernetic route and having supposedly lost your humanity entirely. The game w had some pretty right. Sad in way in fact, think. that's where I lost it with the game. Up until then, I was like, okay, you know, fine. They're not trying very hard on this level or this level. They're they're sort of taking the easy way out. But I'm clicking my way through killing monsters. Fine, I can spend a weekend doing that. Great. So up till then, it was definitely a solid C. I wasn't hating the game, but it's that conceit, which is what the previews all along, including ones that we wrote, said like. Well, the cool thing about this game is that at, at points in the game, you're going to get a chance to replace a part of your own human body with a cybernetic part. And you have to make these decisions carefully along the way, because if you keep doing that, you're going to keep losing your humanity. And at some point, you're going to be past this point of no return. And do you want to make that kind of sacrifice to save the human race and become some kind of like cyborg? And what happens if you do? Is that going to like fuck, you know, fuck with your whole your whole beliefs and your whole world and is it going to change the ending to the game so i decided at some point i'm going to go full full robot i'm just going to take it all the way um and you know they keep warning you the npcs are like you shouldn't do that you know, you're, <laughs> don't do it you're you know it's not worth it so so actually, at some point do you upgrade to robot junk <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, do you do you get like cyber that's like, that's cyber the chick junk? Was just saying you get waist down. Do yeah, yeah, waist down. <laughs> Wait, wow, <laughs> waist down. Yeah, wow. you get your cod piece, your Jethro Tull cod. But piece. they could still have a unit coming out though, like you know Robocop, <laughs> how he still has like a, a face coming out of like the, the robot. <laughs> it's thing. like the one piece of flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm willing to go all the way except for one <laughs> yeah. part. Yeah, yeah, ninety nine percent robot. Yeah. So you know, you keep doing it, and you get, and there's no reason not to as you're going along at first because they basically say like, ah, you probably shouldn't do that because it's gonna be bad. But it's like your choice is, am I gonna take the five percent attack bonus that my cybernetic arm gives me or not? Well, I think I'll take the bonus. So you do, but then it gets up to where it's the brain. Okay, that's the final one is, is your brain. You're gonna replace your own human brain with the cybernetic brain. And, and by this point, and I apologize if anybody thinks I'm spoiling here, but really. The spoiler is like wait till this is like ten dollars, okay? Don't, don't. <laughs> so I'm not. I'm doing you a favor. I promise. Um, you know, it becomes clear by the time you're at the brain part that the that oh my god that AI is actually up to no good, and oh my god maybe the robot people have like a, another agenda. So like, am I going to join that side or am I going to stick with the humans? Okay, so the brain thing comes up, and I really, as a gamer, I, I, at that moment, I thought, like, well, fuck, this might actually, this is the part where if it's going to matter, it's going to matter. And what if I do this, and, and my character is going to start, like, Bleh, you know, start speaking weird shit, or bleeps and bloops, or I'm going to start turning on the other human, you know, AIs, or whatever. So, but I went for it. I'm just going to play the bad guy. I never do this time I'm going to. So I took the brain. And nothing fucking happens. Nothing happens. It doesn't change the game at all. You're still, like, your voiceover is still, now I'm going to go, you know, you're still this sort of, like, John Wayne, all-American hero. You're, you got a fucking robot brain now. <laughs> you're not even human anymore. Your brain is gone. Your brain's been replaced by a cybernetic the brain. Only and you're like, is that now, I know, now I'm going to really take him on. The, the only difference is that now you have this real affinity for craft work. 
It's <laughs> <laughs> like all you ever really want to listen to. This is the only real music. <laughs> and then, you know, so you go on and uh, and you, you know, you have the boss battle and you save everything. And then, like, humanity saved. And there's a cutscene of you with, like, the chick in the game. And you're like, you know, like the sun is setting. And you're, it's like happily ever after. She, and she's stuck with you. You're a fucking robot, and the game, <laughs> the game doesn't even acknowledge it. Last, That's what was so I couldn't believe it. Last week when we were so talking, the choice was nothing. Talking about Braden, Jonathan Blow, and how he has this, this you know, this, this notion of there being dissonance between the story that a gameplay and interactivity communicates and what the actual narrative is. And in this case, both the gameplay and the story are running counter. <laughs> To the story, if that's possible, right? You know, I mean, there's like the yeah. setup for the story is telling you one thing, but then even the narrative itself and the gameplay are both saying that it's entirely irrelevant whether or not you remain a human or exactly. whether or not you take the risk, the, the alleged risk of becoming a robot. Yeah, I mean, they could have said, okay, you saved the world, but look what you did to yourself. You don't get the girl now, you get this pile of parts. Or whatever, you know. Did they just run out of money girlfriend? or something? I mean, I, that, that had to be the plan. It's, it's sort of hard to believe that they would emphasize that stuff and then give you no, you know, feedback. Well, that's what it. the whole thing felt like to me. It felt like <laughs> either this thing got scaled back at the end or they just were like, oh, fuck it. And just, <laughs> you know, who, how many people are really going to buy this? Let's just, just finish it. Yeah. Let's move on. And it really felt like they lost their, their creative drive along the way. Hmm. I'm being harder on. Maybe it, it happened. I, I mean, the they, they the scores have all been, I think, in the same range. Yeah, I don't know. It was. I feel like it's it was okay worse that like they. It, it, it was worse that they tried. I know Anthony's all quiet over here now because I've been clowning on the game. <laughs> <laughs> See, you, but you the think first this is like Yaddle the game. Or well, something. the first part is you know that that's what I'm telling you though. It's, it's like the first day. part's great. You know, I I love this kind of game. You know, I play all the That's what I'm saying. Diablo. I, I didn't play it to the end. Right. Yet. And when you get to the end, it's like, well, why do you even bother with that story if it just didn't matter? Just I, don't I even give me the story. I had that same experience then. playing um, Too Human. I mean, I was playing, like, the completed version, but it came out, like, prior to the review copy. And I played it for about half an hour. And it's another one of those games where you're essentially just doing the same thing over and over again to acquire loot. And at some point... It, it wanted me to go to this, like, Arcadian world to turn a, a crank and then go back into Chrome land so that a door would open. And then as soon as I did that, it had me do it three more times. And then I turned the game off at that point, and that was the end of it. And it's like, this is not distinction to someone like, you know, some people say, I can play this kind of game. Even you, you're like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a game I could play all weekend and kill, click on shit and kill it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like, dude, it, it doesn't get past that. As soon as I hit this point, for the same reason I told you, you know, like, I turn off Batman Begins. Like, I hit this point, and, like, that's it. It's like, there's so many good movies to watch and books to read and games to play like do you really need to click on some shit just because it's theoretically fun to click on shit mm -hmm. well in the case of space siege i wouldn't have continued if i wasn't reviewing i gotta say and and the for me it was the loot thing and you know that's maybe just where we're different there which is which is totally cool like if you want to play more of an action game but like for me the hook with diablo and titan quest and even dungeon siege was um to get stuff you know, like what's going to drop this time? Is it going to be yeah. that epic purple item that, you know, nobody else got? You know, for me, I admit it. For me, that's like a. That sounds like buying Pokemon cards. Kind of. Yeah. Well, sure. I, it's, the I, I guess it's, it's the same appeal. Yeah, it is. I, for out. me, it was, yeah. it's always been the storyline of games that I guess. And at first, Even I did it's like super the story. lame. I still And I, I, still and I liked it. it too at the beginning. I did. I mean, I wanted to review the game because after the demo, I liked it. You yeah, know, when I that's saw why demo, I wanted they, to do it. They also made me believe that all that right. robotic robotic choices and everything was a lot bigger of a deal than it was. Exactly. And so for a good chunk of the game, and certainly much more so than Dungeon Siege, which ultimately I think are better games, but Dungeon Siege's stories were nothing. Right. And here for a good while, probably as long as you played, it's per the storyline's progressing along it's on a nice pace with a, with a couple nice turns but then it just kind of all turns to but shit. they went out of their way to tell you that it was going to be like this big choice and that it was going to yeah. like rock sure. the foundation of the game that's go look at the uh, bad PR. it was on uh, the cover <laughs> like, of uh, way, way to set up a terrible review well go look at the last like yeah. preview i wrote like a week and a half before it came out and that's everything i was being told too exactly you could look at the cover <laughs> of uh, pc gamer had it on their cover of uh, uh, got to be a year ago or so, or I don't know. It says it um, on the back of the box. And Chris Taylor was on the, the cover of the magazine, and they had half of his face as Chris Taylor and half of his face as, you know, this robot cybernetic thing. Again, they're stressing this was the big thing about this game, that this choice between humanity and a cybernetic being. And it's like, 
That's but you didn't do it. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's, that's sort of like the anyway. thing that happens with most games now, though, where, you know, in the planning stages, it's they're always telling you about how it's going to be this amazing storytelling experience that, like, by playing it, you're going to have this, like, really cool thing happen to you. But then by the time you, they finish it, it just doesn't matter anymore. And Sometimes, I mean, that happens in everything in games. I mean, I was just thinking this week... Um, about how you know uh, Treyarch's making the next Call of Duty game, and it's mm. set in both Pacific and then like the Eastern uh, Front, and you you hear their military advisor saying all these things about you know the Japanese fought differently than the Germans, and more specifically, they fought differently during different years of the war, depending on which island and which phase of uh, of the war that they were in. And it sounded really familiar to what I um, heard when Rising Sun came out. It was the EA Pacific first-person shooter in the Medal of Honor series. And they were saying all these same things. And then when I actually, you know, so they, they made this big case about this is a different enemy in a different game. And then when you play the game, you're like, dude, if this guy wasn't there telling me at some point, would I even notice the difference? It still looks like dudes coming out of, like, the spawn point and, like, lining up in front of a fucking MG every time I hit the trigger on it, you know? like, yeah. But it just, I mean, a lot of times I think designers have these these plans and it's difficult to, like, execute on them i mean to deliver them and and meanwhile they're doing like promotion two years before they're done with the game so they stay in all this shit that just never comes to fruition well that's right (laughs) 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 that's another problem yeah Yeah. happens with a lot so let let's talk about stalker since we both been playing that yeah stalker clears guys do you feel like uh some of the ideas not fully realized in the first one are Uh, realized stalker yeah um I don't know. You know, I'm like four hours into it, and the thing that struck struck me most about it was just, um, you know, I I really enjoyed the f- the first game quite a bit. I really liked playing it, but I'm a pussy. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not a horror game guy, and I, you know, there are moments in that game, like long st- uh, stretches where you're by yourself the whole time, and you're like fighting all the scary stuff, and you're running out of ammo, and you're you're all your equipment's dying and you're like god damn it and uh i feel i really feel like this one they go out of their way to to make you feel at least like there are a lot of people on your side like immediately like it starts mm-hmm. off you're in this in this uh, encampment for some new faction uh, that wasn't really in the first game clear sky and and within like 20 minutes you're out in these swamps with like a pretty big crew of military guys on your side not military guys but guys from this faction and you're like clearing these areas and they're helping you out and and uh and it, it it's a massive thing like pretty much right off the bat it doesn't start off with like you know a, a couple of like little shitty shoots shootouts it starts with like really big set piece shootouts and lots of guys on your side and it just uh feels a little bit more approachable in that way but at the same time like just they pour out so much stuff in that first 30 minutes where you, you know you know like where you, you've got to clear like all these areas and guys are asking for help every five <laughs> seconds you know did you get that and you don't have to do any of that yeah. if you don't want well you have to clear out the you have to do the faction war thing in the beginning don't you yeah well there's like when you leave the town there's you, you immediately get a distress call from the local guys that are fighting like those mutant boars mm-hmm. you don't have to help them there's like another watchtower that's taken over by bandits and like if you go through the order of the missions sort of like in in the order they're they're made available for you yeah and that's the next one and then there's the church but really if you want you can skip all that and you go up to the big base where where the guys are at and that's the faction mission yeah but it's like it's definitely like i did everything like you're saying i went and and every submission on there yeah at first it seems kind of intimidating because you're you set out to go to one spot on the map you're you're going toward (laughs) it and then all of a sudden you're like help me merc we're being surrounded and you're like okay and And you have to haul ass to get there a lot of times if you're not fast enough if you like run out of stamina or something yeah. Then it'll be like the guys will get killed. They'll die there, you know, and then that's it. So. Or if you get there ahead of time because all that stuff there, you know, the game is like mega about simulating uh, things in the world. So they've got everything running on timers. Mm-hmm. And so they'll be like, okay, well, these guys are going to have their camp invaded at such and such time. And we're going to play the radio announcement to you right now. But if you're, if you're like pretty close to them when they play the announcement, they're like, help, we're being attacked. And you run over there. And if you get there really quick, there's still like, <laughs> a guy strumming, <laughs> strumming his guitar oh, next, to the, <laughs> next to the fire. <laughs> what? They're like, hey, stalker. And then, you that. know, then like two minutes later. The, <laughs> this is this is the big interesting thing for me is like the extent to which like things are procedural and in which they're running on a timer. And it's like the experience of playing the game is that there are all these like 
autonomous groups just doing things on their own. So like you can ignore them. And at other times you might be in a fight and then all of a sudden uh, assistance comes up to help you. And if you die or and you go to your last save and do it again, maybe they might not arrive because the timing is different. Yeah. But I do think that it is all working on like this route. So like if you were to sit there and wait, you would see those guys fight the boars in the first thing, head over to the tower, go through the church, go up the hill, and they would just basically be doing it. But you can just like, You'd Skip end up out. skipping it all by yeah. going over to some other area in the swamps, you know. That sucks that that happened, though. Like, I can, that I can happened to me totally a couple of times, yeah, yeah. That sort of thing happening. I do like, like, that aspect of the game is fun, though, just to see, like, what's going on. And the guys are good. They, they, they're they effective in their fighting. They do use the cover well, like, in the way that when they showed those demonstration videos, I was like, how much of this is scripted? How much is procedural, you know? Yeah. But the one problem is is that the fucking enemies will push you out of the way to take your cover. So, like, if you're in a good spot, you, it's like you almost need to play like, shit, if I'm working with guys, if I was a programmer, where am I going to, like, tell, what am I going to, like, highlight in the code for these to be good places for our AI to go? Mm -hmm. And if you're there and then they want to go there, they'll just push your ass out of the way. And they think, <laughs> like, I'm hiding behind this, like, this stairwell, like, shooting guys, you know, I'm doing the lean-to thing and I'm just looking down my sights and all of a sudden I'm just, like, move, jerking around the map and I turn and look and it's like my team is posted up where I just was. <laughs> Thanks for throwing me out to the fucking... That happened world, to me. You know? there, there's, a, there's a moment uh, later on in the game after you leave the swamps where you're looking for this guy and you find him at the bottom of this valley standing out of rock and he's like Merc hurry up and get up on this rock there are mutant dogs everywhere <laughs> and so you jump up on the rock and then all these mutant dogs come down like lots and lots of them and you start picking them off and the motherfucker just pushed me off the rock <laughs> <laughs> into this pack of dogs he tore me apart I was like gee thanks uh, but you know it's it's bound to happen with a game with that much stuff going on and somehow I don't know Stalker pulls this trick for me where it, you know somehow I'm able to swallow a lot of like bullshit like a lot of like glitched out sort of messed up stuff because mm -hmm. like when it clicks it's so awesome yeah and this it, is exactly how yeah. the first game was for me too yeah I just yeah I tend to be more forgiving of, of that sort of thing and not focus on it I just like I don't know and if even it's like, are we giving them a it makes free pass feel... there because we got this version of their story in our minds. It's like, oh, these Ukrainians, and next thing you know, they're going to have to be fending off Russia. And like, fuck, they can have a bug. It's cool. <laughs> 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 you know, it's like... I don't know. I think I think some of it um, is, is just that what they're trying to do is so cool and that what and and that it has like so few comparisons to other things that I've played at least mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm willing to take it. And it usually doesn't really – it doesn't really break your game. I mean, it might break the illusion sometimes. Like, I mean, I, I, I came across some really, like, uh, bad stuff later on where, you know, I'd be fighting a huge group of enemies and I'd somehow kill the magical one and all the enemies disappear. Uh, that. We like, should clarify that we preview. are playing preview. Preview. Yeah. And that's something that I imagine will... I, things like that should be fixed, obviously. Oh, like, yeah. like stuff where you're getting shoved out of cover just because you know that's how the AI is working. Like that, that doesn't bother me much. But there's some, there's they some. They could fix that. Yeah, and I think it has to do with the fact that they are like pushing a lot more density in the game and a lot, a lot more characters on screen, a lot more AI, a lot more simulation. Like mm -hmm. the 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 first game, it was like wide open spaces, a lot of wide open spaces with very little in between it, and a lot of that was nice uh, in that it really set the atmosphere that people appreciate about it but they are definitely and it, and it made it, the, it it communicated the sense of actually traveling so I mean you yeah. felt that, hmm. like if you're in a new area you felt <laughs> like in an MMO you know when you cross these enormous spaces mm -hmm. and you don't have the teleport option right. I mean that's kind of like the cool thing about it is you feel as though you, you've actually crossed some distance I mean it does yeah. a little bit of that and well, the, but the clear sky is definitely more dense. There's more stuff to do in between. You definitely, from base to base, is a little bit shorter. I feel like there are more bases where you can like unload your loot and and you know uh, buy new equipment and stuff. But like beyond that, there's also just lots of little pockets of enemies that you can sort of confront if you want to little situations that you can stumble onto that I, I just feel like it's way more packed in mm -hmm. than, than the first game. They, they try to, like, the real estate is much, there's much more of it now. Like, in that first level, the swamps, it's really yeah. enormous when you're going through there. And it's also cool, too, I found out that, like, um, just because there's time of day, dynamic time of day change and dynamic weather change, it's a whole other experience to, like, be out in, like, the reeds when it's pitch black and there's, like, lightning and rain coming down and you've got a flashlight going through the weeds and you hear, like, some shitty growling in it, you know? Yeah. Then it is when you're in the day and when you're with a bunch of guys, you know? Yeah. But then, um, then they'll also 
it seems like they're trying to throw a lot more things in the environment to like keep you busy and that will be like you know if there's like someone someone will say hey i got a tip for you pay me 200 bucks and i'll give it to you and then what it, what it does is it, put, it marks a point on your map and you go and maybe inside of a, a hole in the log there's a stash for you to grab mm-hmm. um maybe inside of a cabin of a truck you know like sitting on the seat there's like a box and then you can um and even in the past you know like you know the, the common head was there'd be these in, in stalker one there might be these enormous like you know like wonderful like sets of architecture and stuff there's nothing in them now it, when you do climb it up and around those things there almost always is some kind of like hidden cache you know there's like yeah. a little tin and you shoot it open you can get something out of it and yeah and they are reusing a lot of uh environments and buildings and assets and stuff from the first game i mean it's like I've the come same a, locations I've come a lot but they've a mixed prequel, them up so. there's some sort of storyline about how between the prequel and Stalker, there's like some sort of mega emission that literally mm-hmm. twists the landscape or something because it, things are there, but they're not there like they used to be. They're kind of mixed up. Right. I don't know. But that, that's yeah. one one way that I'm I'm waiting to see because right where I'm at now is actually a section that is in the original Stalker. Of course, it appears different you now. Yeah. But I'm I'm hoping that they they get more mileage out of it than I'm seeing so far. So so for example, if you go to an area that's like I played this in the first one. This is like, there's so many opportunities here. There's one play on your expectations. There's, you, you're used to one thing being here, and then now we can do something else with it, you know? Yeah. And then also, in their own sense, it's like, here's a second stab at it. It's like a second edit. So it's like, well, what would we have really done now that we have the benefit of hindsight with this? You know, yeah. how would you we mean with a particular it? area itself? Yeah. So, like, say if you're in par- whole parts of this game appeared in the original Stalker mm-hmm. in a different form, in it, you know, although there, there are tons of new areas too that are enormous. And so it's like, if it's, is it really just like, hey, I remember that house, and you go in there, and now it's just, it's, it, maybe it was like, like mutated dogs before now there's some bandits in there but i mean what if there's like i want like well there's a lot of like more to later on you'll you find bases that at one point had been like uh sort of scary uh underground spots you know they're not underground bases but like i specifically remember there was this one um i don't know maybe you'd call it like a dungeon in the original game yeah that where you, where you start out in this big like concrete military complex and you make your way down but it was always like an enemy spot now it's a base or uh you know they change around a lot of stuff like the dumps used to be like so uh, full of radiation that you couldn't just like go traipsing up to them and right. now now you can like walk all over the dumps because they're they don't have that problem now or something, yeah you so- know? So. so do you guys feel like uh because i've only you know i've played like the first few hours of the original stalker yeah and it's like do you think like this one's like improved upon enough or feels like so drastically different that if i like wait and play stalker clear sky first mm-hmm. before i play regular stalker is it gonna feel like i'm taking two steps back playing the original stalker or like do you i think, like, i don't feel like I, I i don't feel like that yet not from what i've played i i mean it might feel like a little more barren to play the original. Because it almost Stalker, seems cool. But... I mean, it almost seems cool to play the prequel before. I mean, are you the same character from the um, from this? No, you're a different no. person. Oh, okay. Yeah. And there's technical things like, I mean, this they've really optimized the code. So with this one, I had issues running the original. And this one runs right. really well, and it has like a host of new effects and stuff. So it, it will be a step backwards that in that respect. The other thing that sucks, I mean, I really do feel it, it works best for people like us who played the original and come back to it now is that, like, we've talked about this game over and over on GFW Radio since that review, since I reviewed that. Right. And it's like, it's it's clear that it's been, like, this experience has stuck with me, but I just haven't been ready to say, like, I'm going to go replay that game. And so here's, like, a great way now. I'm like, okay, I am playing it again. And it's like, I am getting the nostalgia because sometimes it is the the same areas and stuff but there's all this new stuff and it really is a new game you know yeah. so it's kind of i appreciate that element yeah I, I i still like the bizarre mix of the fact that um it's still stalker still has these this menu system and like and a lot of graphics like overlay graphics that look like they're from like a 1990s pc game <laughs> You know, they've gotten to all this trouble to create a world that is pretty, like, believable, modern 3D world with, like, great effects. Like Sean said, they've, they're adding, like, all these cool lighting and, and like, smoke effects and crazy stuff. And uh, But but then, you know, the the, the the map and everything that you pull up and, and, like, even when you're talking to someone, like, in the tavern or something, it brings up, like, a little pixelated, like, face of, of mm-hmm. who they are. I mean, mm-hmm. it, lo- it just looks like something from, like, 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ellie. LED battleships that yeah. you buy, that you buy a battleship the game from Mattel has like better graphics at times. Yeah. But I, I don't know. There's and, something and about throwback it, stuff too. Like we were yeah. talking um, 
like before we were recording, we both got to this part where these guys basically gank you in full. And yeah. it's not, you can't correct it. Like if you go to this one part and you don't, you have this choice, like these guys tell you to put your gun down and be, be their bitch. And you're definitely outnumbered. And when I got there, I didn't even have a, a radiation suit and the environment was killing me as it was. So I was just <laughs> eating through my packs. I'm like, I'm not going to fight these guys all armed with machine guns and stuff. So I'm like, all right, I'll give you my stuff. And you look and it's like, dude, they take everything. They yeah. fucking take everything you got, every dollar you've earned oh, from all these side missions and stuff, and that's yeah. it. You don't go 20 minutes down the road and catch up with their boss and kill them and get your shit back. It's gone. It is and gone. Like, yeah. just, that's unthinkable wow. in, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a really old, right? That seems like an old yeah, PC that does sound type like an of old, thing. Like, old school thing. It's so cool because it it's a immersive, of, but, <laughs> yeah. And and there's just, I don't know, it's funny to see, like, the design choices that had, had this game been made by an American team would be so yeah. different. I mean... If if Stalker was an American game, it would have no HUD. Like it would, they would try like really hard to keep you in the world and to not like distract you with like RPG stuff and all mm -hmm. and everything. And they wouldn't even have so many options for missions. They would be like, God, you know, like Western players are really completist. You know, so many of them, and they they don't want to feel like they're missing out on stuff because we're offering them these side missions and they don't get there in time, or they have to choose to go this way or this way. They can't mm -hmm. help everyone. Then they're just gonna reset the game and try to do it all. Yeah. It's like if yeah. they really want. It's like, dude, you make some choices and that's it. Like that's how it's gonna be. You know. You yeah. Yeah. The I mean, and just the complexity in general. Like these guys are not shying away from complexity in any way, and they're mm -hmm. just throwing it all at you. And and then you know, and they want you to worry about like radiation levels mm -hmm. and whether or not your character has eaten lately, and like the condition of your armor and all this, yeah. all this stuff that like to a Western developer. The condition would seem of really your weapons. I, yeah, yeah, I totally felt that way about. The Witcher, which is another, you know, East uh, East European uh, game, where yeah. where they just throw every. Did you did you play it? Did you actually end up playing the whole thing? I mean, the the Witcher. Yeah, no, I've I've only played a little bit of okay, it. Okay, but like they did the same thing with the interface and the you know the um, screens for like making potions. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that screen, there's like, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was like actually like being in chemistry class. It's like what the, <laughs> what the fuck is all this? I, it's and, just that culture. I think of like growing up completely on PC games. Yeah, like, they're, like consoles never penetrated there, and it's right. still like totally PC dominated. Mm. And I'm not complaining either. I liked yeah. it. I mean, it reminded me of like the old Wizardry games or where these RPGs where it's like you really had to like think about what the fuck you were yeah. doing, and you really had to make choices with the quests and things like that. I mean, it just. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right. And now There's those guys are doing the, that that you know download old school game service. Good right? old which, games, which totally uh, makes sense. Gog. Okay, yeah, before man. we go on to good old games again, it's time for a special segment. This is what this rabbit oh, in the shit. background been. Oh no. We received we received a bunch of candy. <laughs> We're not playing this game. We are playing this game. <laughs> this week, uh, Sammy Falla sent us a Put bunch of. What are they called? Bean boozled jelly bellies. And the thing is, you've heard of the nasty um, Harry Potter jelly beans. Bernie Bots. Right. Like, like pickled Bernie anus bots. and like, yeah. like uh, I don't like think they had pickled anus. Hemorrhoidal <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> just stuff like I don't that. think J.K. Rowling would have. So, but the flavors, uh, the flavors were nasty. What this is, is they pair, they look identical, but you're basically playing roulette. So you might get what what is called top banana, or it could be pencil shavings. You could get uh, butter popcorn also the same color as a rotten egg or there's like oh, ear, earwax latte booger and juicy pear baby wipes coconut <laughs> vomit peach moldy cheese <laughs> i don't so what we're gonna this. do let me let me look at the no because you're part of the guinea pig we're gonna look not, at this uh, not it. so what we need to do is we're all gonna this is no. like sixth grade truth or dare i'm not doing this someone someone <laughs> spent five dollars buying us some fucking candy i'm gonna <laughs> make it look as wild. <laughs> so we can even just do a round, but like, so the first round, let's go for these. We just oh, take one. On, we're all going to take the we, same we're flavor. We're each taking one. That's the worst one. It doesn't, don't oh. go ruining it, man. We're, we, <laughs> you know, if, if there's one lesson that I have learned here. I know. It's that if Sean Elliott comes up to you and says, hey. Grab yours. Check this Come out. On, it's communion. You, you, you do not eat, you do not eat Sean it. Sean Elliott <laughs> you just got brings it to you it. and tells you to eat. Ryan, there's Ryan. one for you. Grab it. No. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No. Come on. I'm no. eating it. All right, every, come on, Ryan. All right. It's a jelly bean. Okay, everyone. I'm terrified. Take your All right. Take your jelly belly. All right. Try not to masticate too much into your mic. Oh. oh shit. I got peach. <laughs> oh fuck you. Who got vomit? Oh, I got vomit. <laughs> I got vomit. 
Anthony, you got vomit? <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, the letter also says... What the fuck? Oh, you know what? Oh. I wrong. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's way too real. I, I got that. It is way too real. That was real. like eating vomit. These are actually from <laughs> Sam. I read the wrong thing. These really are Bernie Bot. Oh. So it's something to Here's drink. the rule, Jeff. Oh. Yeah. Sam, who sent this into oh. us, says you have to chew and swallow or you're a giant pussy. Yeah, well, I'm a giant pussy, I guess. Oh. I just spit mine out. That one was way too the floor. real. It was. I thought, that was <laughs> gross. When you said like the, that it would be these different flavors, I thought that it would be like like a joke on it, but that was like actual vomit smell. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I haven't come that close to throwing up in a long ass time, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one one more round then, and we'll move to something else. So let's, let's take. Let's do you the can pairs. choose. Let's, let's do, do the pairs. I already got vomit. Pair. Isn't okay, do like... the, everyone grab one now. It's either Please pear. God. It's either a pear or a booger. <laughs> this what one can't be that bad. What the fuck does a booger taste like? Yeah, you don't remember. I guess we're about to find <laughs> out. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone go. Jeff, don't pause. All right. Me. Don't do no Hurley shit on this. I got booger. Oh, I got a booger. I got booger. <laughs> I got booger. It tastes like it dirt. It tastes like a dirt, yeah. yeah. Oh. Like a dirt. <laughs> it tastes like a penny. I'm not spitting this one. I download it. While you eat, <laughs> I, I, while you eat your I was booger. trying to say I swallowed it, and I said I downloaded it. <laughs> okay, real quick. <laughs> Nerd. I got a story to help you digest. Um, oh, while while you eat these, go ahead and go for the next round, and I'll just tell no, you. No, we're story not doing. We did two rounds. What are the, Why what do you guys these? do? Baby wipes and coconut. Skip are? is the hero of the podcast. He just brought in glasses of water <laughs> oh. during this frat hazing we're having yeah. here. Oh, thank you, sir. So we used to hang. My friend Hans and I used to hang out with uh, this guy Marcel. <sighs> yeah. And at one point, we got into this discussion about um, that when the last time he had performed Cunnilingus, and it turned out that <laughs> Marcel fit a certain stereotype about. <laughs> about black males and that he actually, he was, he didn't, he professed not to enjoy it. And so as we're talking, you're supposed to be eating your beans as I talk about this. And uh, while we were, we were talking about, we we're like, so wait, like when was the last time? And he's like, 93. And this was in 99. So we're just like, really? And then, then he just dropped the line that made it all worthwhile. And he's just like, it tastes like a penny. A penny. So forever <laughs> after. <laughs> The moral of the story is if something something you had doesn't taste good. It tastes like a tastes penny. Like a, penny. Like a penny. I think I think that sounds uh, <laughs> unclean. There might be some like we thought about. We're like it was just random, but if you really think about it, there might be some explanation we don't want to get into. That has to do with a certain cycle. Oh. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm I'm killing this conversation right now. Oh here. man, I just had. Okay, the, one last bean right here. This is no, popcorn or rotten egg. I can't do it. I can't do it. The rotten I can't one do it either. Be the shit. I can't do, do it. I can't. Come on. It. It'll make seriously. Right, it'll make me vomit. Let's do it. Oh. Rotten fucking oh. egg. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I spit that out. I'm a pussy. That's the end of this oh, segment. That was bad. Oh my God. Whoa, that was really <laughs> strong. Wow, you should have seen these guys' faces. That oh. was incredible. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that scared me That too was much. foul. <laughs> okay, so. You know what? I, I want Is there I, anything good that I can eat after I, that? You like, just don't know. You, you might have popcorn. Go for it. I don't think there's any. You should find a blue one because that's either toothpaste or berry. Oh, yeah. And oh, that one's good. Is oh, that's fine. not too bad. This okay. this reminds me of a YouTube video I once saw where people sent? played rock, paper, scissors yeah. and like the loser had to put their hand in a mouse trap. Jeez. He could have really? sent some like good this, candy this that kind of like that. After yeah. that. Oh my god. Oh my that god. Was foul. Okay. Yeah. So I know we can't talk about a certain game you're playing. Yeah, I'm um, playing a game that's really, Anthony. really good. Anthony. Toothpaste. Anthony. Well, at least Children. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I was just trying to give him something to clean out that. Oh. Candy time is over. <laughs> Tell us about your homework, Anthony. You just saw Dawn of War 2 and the reveal of the Tyranid race. It was red. <laughs> so they're finally letting us play Tyranids. They've been teasing with us for well, years yeah, I mean, and years. They wouldn't talk about how they play or anything yet, though, oh. because, you know, all I, all I saw was a, uh, a single-player campaign mission against them. And the whole point of the level they showed us was to show, like, uh, I don't know how much this will play into multiplayer, cause, but they wanted you to see, like, in single-player... If you like, because the way it works is you get an overall campaign map and you can see like there's like a light tier infestation, a heavy one, etc. Real and quick so, aside for, for those yeah. not in the know, Tyranids, if you've ever heard of the Zerg, you'll probably be drawing comparisons. Of course, Tyranids were around first, but this is an alien race in the Warhammer universe that's all basically insectoid type things of different classes and. and every so every single of the twelve expansion packs that Dawn of War had. Every time there'd be new races, the, the boards would People always, would always Do we finally Tyranids. get Tyranids? Yeah. Is it Tyranids yet? So now it is. 
yeah, and I guess part of that was maybe they just didn't think the technology was there in the I original think that Dawn was of the War original to, reason. to like yeah. give them. But uh, so yeah, we saw Tyranids, and the whole thing with them is if you like don't take care of their infestation, infestation really, they like start warping the planet. So like on the level we saw, it was a pretty heavy infestation. So as you progressed, it went from like a swamp to like a swamp that looked all like kind of semi-alien. And what, was that hab- Was that trait of the Tyranids established in like the Warhammer Forty Thousand? Lore before uh, StarCraft came out with the uh, with the Zerg because they of course Zerg do the, some sort of terraforming. They have yeah, no, I was always under the impression yeah that I mean I'm not exactly an expert, but I thought that yeah Tyranids come and they eat everything on the planet basically and turn it all Tyranid and then they move on. So, but yeah, what do you, what do you know about Tyranid lactation? Tyranids died. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Robert. They're not mammals. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Doi. Uh, uh, but yeah, so like in phase one, it was like the land would look kind of shitty and there'd be like these little spore mines that would come towards you and spore mines will just like roll up on you, semi-sentient type things that seek you out and then blow up. And like phase two is like little like turret looking things would come out of the ground and they'd launch like projectiles at you. And then phase three was like what you think of as a StarCraft hive, like a full hive would come, and every 10 seconds it would spawn more Tyranids. So you have to take that shit out, yeah, or else it, they can just quickly overwhelm you. But what was cool was it's actually— like the pile of bones and gauntlet. It was like the pile of bones and gauntlet. <laughs> but what was cool was actually seeing like uh, the way that the Tyranids animated, and it was uh, we were talking with— uh, what was that guy's name? I can't remember. Uh, Johnny? The producer? I the lead designer? So. Yeah, I believe so. Um, I apologize that I don't remember your name, but uh, <laughs> if you listen. But, uh, you know, the coolest thing was talking, to, hearing him talk about how they they wanted to make the Tyranids come to life, like, because they had always done, like, in Company Heroes, they had animated Squad AI, and you know, but basically Germans, Brits, Americans, they all acted kind of the same because they're all humans looking out for themselves. Um, but, you know, when it came to Tyranids, they're like these like hive mind organisms so how do you portray like how they would act and so they actually went to uh, Jurassic Park the film for their inspiration so like when you see like the things coming at you they approach you like the way raptors would and then they like if you approach them into melee combat they'll like bound backwards to like get to the proper distance and stuff hmm. it's kind of hard to describe but if you think about the way you remember dinosaurs moving in Jurassic Park that's kind of the way the Tyranids move but uh yeah I mean I'm, I'm all curious. I remember is the scene with someone getting eaten on the toilet that I wasn't even. Dinosaurs that was like Jurassic that. Park two or something. No, that was, no, that was the first Park. Jurassic Park. It was. It was. Yeah. It was the lawyer. That, that was like one of my. You first don't remember the scene where the fat guy got spit on? <laughs> no. By some little dinosaur. All, all I remember was, is uh, it must have been one of my first nerd experiences because I left it going. The book was so much better. So <laughs> the yeah, book, <laughs> the book was a lot better. Yeah, but uh, but it still sucked. <laughs> <laughs> But if you were in fifth grade, it kicked ass. <laughs> yeah. All or right, I'm going to eat another one of these things. I'm going to eat baby wipe or coconut. I, I really? You're going pull those out. Now. It's, it's going to be this huge distraction. Baby wipe? That's really the... I got coconut. That's awesome. So, eat another wow. one. No. <laughs> I, I understand odds and statistics. Yeah, but you keep eating the jelly beans. It doesn't matter what flavor you're eating. Yeah. You're talking to a uh, blackjack expert here. Yeah. Ryan. Yeah. Are you oh, wait, are we not gambler? supposed to tell that uh, on air? I Uh-oh. don't know that I would call myself a blackjack expert. Would you call yourself a compulsive gambler? I would be if I had the money. Did you get to the Did point you where you spend begging? all your money on gambling? Were you no. begging for a no. comp at the casino? No. For like a comp at the buffet? No. <laughs> if, you were at, if you were at Vegas and there was a Star Trek online convention happening at the same time, <laughs> would you go to that or would you or would you gamble? Or would you go to the Star well, Trek Well, I don't actually like Star Vegas? Trek. So... What if you walked into the casino and there were five blackjack tables and the dealer was a Klingon at one table? <laughs> and which, table which table would you go to? Which, which table plays with the fewest decks? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, he's got the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> the great thing is you could have an actual, probably an hour-long discussion on that if you got a couple Star Trek Scruples with around. Ryan. Gambling in Star Trek. <laughs> when, when, did, when did you start wasting all your money on gambling? I, what? I didn't. Like, when did you first realize you were an addict, though? What the hell? What? <laughs> this whole podcast is we're just waiting to do an intervention here. Yeah. How many, what's going on? We're trying Tell to us break about the ice how many First of all, you owe us all a lot of money. 
Um, he tried to say if I would go pick him up two scratch offs, he'd let me review <laughs> Spore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, then when I, and then when I brought him, he's like, no, I need a pull tab too. <laughs> <laughs> and the fucking and the lid from Seven Up because they're I guess they're running too <laughs> special. Did I did I ever did I ever tell you that I worked at a Seven Eleven in high school? And, and like, did I ever tell you this? I worked at a Seven Eleven in high school with like the two other guys who were in my band at the time. <sighs> And we just like ran the place. The only other guy we ever worked with was this old dude named Ron, who was a compulsive scratch off <laughs> dude who should never have been working working at a gas station. And he would come in and just take a roll of scratch offs, like two hundred, pull them out, take them into the back, scratch them off, then ring them up and get the money. Were his fingers like permanently oh silver? No, he used the like, coin, you know. He didn't use his fingers. I would rather like that his fingers be silver for my vision. Not gonna lie, when but he I, did that for a long time. When I go to the casino, I do hunt down the uh, Star Wars slot machine. You do? Yeah. Do you Does think it, you're gonna do better at that? Or? No, that's the you wheel. Just like that's, giving that one your that's money. That's the wheel of fortune. Just gonna one. feel that's the one I do better at. Do you guys think that these. gamers are more likely or less likely to gamble? There's probably oh like gosh, just like the loosest correlation, if any. I mean, I yeah, I don't know. I don't I, think that gaming like. I feel like there's a lot of like poker players, you know. But maybe that's just the age group. Like all every all the young people play poker now. I think that's probably yeah, like yeah. just a general like age group thing. Before we leave Seven Eleven, I've been waiting for the opportunity to to make this public service announcement. Okay. While we're still in that Seven Eleven, and I wanted to point out in the past, you know, we talked about how um, an abusive father can get basically everything he needs to keep his household abusive at the counter. Seven <laughs> <laughs> Eleven. But furthermore, um, a fiend can have a great time there as well. Like, if you're ever to 7-Eleven, and sometimes it might be next to the panty rose, but they're like these miniature roses, and they come in a small vial. And if you ever look at that, and you're like, I don't know, just just because maybe my girlfriend wants to put this on her lapel or something, but really you you throw the rose away, and the, the vial is a crack pipe, and it comes <laughs> with it's open on two winds. And same thing when they sell, like, a Lucy, a single cigarette. It'll come in the same thing, or a cigar, and it'll have the same kind of thing. Those are huh. all. Just be just wow. be aware that those are crack pipes. And awesome! What can, a great public service that I this have podcast found is multiple, providing. I have found multiple crack pipes. In How to find cheap underwear. crack pipes by GFW Radio? <laughs> no, sponsored I'm actually, by Ziff Davis Media. I'm saying that you yeah, because lots of crackheads listen to podcasts. <laughs> ask, ask to speak to the manager. Ask to speak to the manager and demand an answer. Say, what is this for? Uh huh. And he says it's like it's a mini rose. <laughs> Good thing our one Mexican cast member did that. <laughs> we can have gotten away with it. Hey, I have I have a Seven Eleven story. All right. Okay, awesome. I ha- I have a friend who used to work at a Seven Eleven many years ago, and uh, I I heard the story through him, and he he was robbed many times at this Seven Eleven. And, you know, these, these dudes would come in with guns, you know, make him give him the money and everything. And he, he was just like, whatever, you know, I'm not taking a bullet for, you know, It got to the wage. point where he'd leave the register right. at the fucking well, door. It, like, it, well, no, it, well, it got to the point where, you know, they would come in and just be like, what's up? He'd be like, how's it going? Here's the money. Give me five <laughs> minutes and I, I got to call the cops, you know. He would hear ding, and then, ding, and just hit like eject on the cash <laughs> register tray. <laughs> and it got so bad at one point, I guess they brought in like a, a, a moving truck and like took the arcade games. <laughs> I thought you were going to say what they the took the whole like chip aisle. No, they, t- they took the arcade machine, and you know, like he was being, he was like, they thought he was in on it because, wow. because, because it, was it was so because elaborate. they were able to come and take the yeah. arcade. So in that time, they get like a, like a dolly or something, or they they had like a mini forklift in the back, and they pull that down. <laughs> he's like he's like giving them drinks in case they're sweating. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh, dude, I, I used, used to hate how like cops would come into Seven Eleven. Working at Seven Eleven, like cops always come in there because you have comp cups that you give cops, like little like styrofoam cups, and they come in and sure. get cokes and and, the, and coffee and, it's and worth stuff. Your, worth your while because then for the the ten minutes that they're in there, you're not going to get held up. Yeah, but I was I was like you know in the Burbs or in Austin. I worked in both places. But like w- one time, I had my guitar case in the back, and I, you know I was like a little punk rocker guy who thought he was like badass, like rebel, and I had this bumper sticker on it that said shoot cops not heroin and the <laughs> cop went back there and drank his coffee and was like whose guitar is this and i'm like oh you know i think that's somebody in the third shift <laughs> <laughs> nice i was gonna say i had uh some friends who in in high school pulled their pickup truck to uh there's this chain used to be called tg and they 
they pulled up uh, the back of their truck to the front. And you know when they have all those little like vending machine things where you put your quarters in and turn the crank, <coughs> and it's like a whole rack of them with like Caps eight toys. of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, they just like pulled up their truck and threw that whole fucking thing in the back <laughs> of their truck and drove away. And for the next week at school, everyone had like three like plastic spiders and shit. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, uh, so let's like before like we we what go on we about Seven Eleven yeah. for another moment. Let's yeah, eat, let's eat another let's jelly take bean. A, like take stock of all the the game stuff we played. I mean, Robert, you just saw. Well, there's an EA event last week yep. that a couple of us went to. Robert, another fine showing by you, EA. I gotta say, you just uh, went on a boat cruise and saw the Godfather Part Two. Yes, it's hard being a Don. It's being hard, a, it's hard a, being a Don. We yeah. learned at the EA event that being a game designer is, a, is like being the Don. That's really hard for me to see how that might be true. So let's, I don't think let's so. talk about Godfather before we... I don't, you know, I don't know what to say about Godfather. The event was like people hanging out on this yacht, like a bunch of people that I'd never met before in the game industry, and they had like this... Uh, this sort of uh, card game that they made that was supposed to tell you how the Godfather strategy elements work. So you had to sit down and play this card game, no. uh, which is really like it's a weird environment to have to learn it in because they filled the boat with like uh, sort of like girls in slinky black dresses who would like bring you drinks uh, and like a, massa- a masseuse and all of these, you know, amenities. Did you get a massage? I didn't get a massage. Actually, they had that. They they had that same setup at EA. Oh well, yeah. I should go on, but yeah, like I believe you. I vouch for it. I <laughs> but I want to. What's the big lesson you learned about about this boat trip, though? Uh, well, you never want to go to a a game event on a boat. And that's why, because you can't leave. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very good. But that, topper. I, I thought of that. Never that, go that, to boat events. Sound, yeah. That makes us sound so spoiled because I mean we're talking about. Look what we're describing. You're going on a boat with a bunch of hot chicks and free like gambling and massages. But what it, what it misses drinks. what it misses out on is it's not it's work. Like it's not it doesn't feel like you're having a party. It feels like you're there with a bunch of dudes that you don't really want to talk to, and you're gonna get like sold on a game for three hours because every time someone comes up. To you from the game company they're going to want to harp on like the three bullet points that they're telling you about right and it's not it's not you're not there to have fun you're there to work and i would rather just go to like an office Mm -hmm. and have the demo and learn about the game and go yeah it's a gimmick that doesn't work were you guys at ziff davis when they had the uh the christmas party on the boat yeah were you there yeah because that was a fucking nightmare (laughs) 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 for the exact same reason you couldn't leave you were stuck. You know, yeah. and first of all, it's, it's the office Christmas party, right? I mean, and, of, of course, Ziff didn't let you bring your spouses because that's just the way Ziff rolls or your, your girlfriends <laughs> or whatever. It's like, holiday party? No, you can't bring your family. <laughs> so, oh, so okay. you know, so it was on this boat, and it was like, first of all, it was freezing. It was freezing outside, and, you know, and it was crowded inside. So it was either, like, be with your sweaty coworkers inside or freeze outside. And then... Like less than halfway uh, on the in the course of this trip, they ran out of food. Okay, so you're at this party without food. Oh, and there was no like decent alcohol either. So oh, you're on this God. you're at this party with your workmates at night when you'd rather be home on a boat. It was freezing and there was no food. So we actually like went into the boat's like storage compartment and found like packs of like chips, so, salty. like seventy-five cent <laughs> chips, like Lay's potato chips, and we're breaking them out like we'd been, you know, shipwrecked for like five days. <laughs> People are like, "Oh my God, thank God, fucking potato chips!" <laughs> How many packs have you had? You already had two. Give me that. I haven't had anything to eat. <laughs> and this is like our Christmas uh, party. No. This is like thank you for working here. And you were also on the. <laughs> you were also on the bay for two. hours. Hours too when you and we couldn't go level. home. Oh, yeah, and we couldn't no. go home. It was like when we no, finally I'm... hit land. Thank God, we're <laughs> home. That is so sad. Anyway. This was nothing like that. So I've never gone to a boat party ever since. Ever since. Yeah, but the game I think actually looks fairly interesting. I mean, really? I think it's a little bit um, depressing to me to see that like. After, you know, there was a, a bit of a stink when they made the first game. Everyone was sort of like, yeah. oh, they got the Godfather, you know? Are they really going to be able to make a game that sure. lives up to the Godfather? Now it's like, 
oh, hey, come check out our new strategy crime game. It's called The Godfather 2. It's like right, God, right, The Godfather right. is now just like a brand. They you, got over the whole could, movie There, There will be like 20 yeah. games now, I guarantee you, like right. anything, you know? They'll I noticed, make I noticed when we were at PSP EA and they did a uh, – for this gamer stand, they did a little video presentation. That's when the guy said being a designer is like being a Don. And they started showing this uh, trailer for Godfather. The music was like – this like '60s James Bond music, da, 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 da. Godfather <laughs> 2. I'm like, hello. They have like the most famous soundtrack in film fucking history. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where is it? They paid like how many millions for this license? <laughs> they're and, using this like Get Smart music. And, and, <laughs> and they don't. They don't. They're not taking like the the visual cues from the movie like they did with the first one. It's really bright, saturated colors. Yeah. It actually looks a lot more like the Scarface game from a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's yeah. Set in Miami, Miami, right? What's that? It's set in Miami, if not there. It's Miami, Cuba, and New York City. Okay. So, b- and that makes sense because that's what the movie was set in. Yeah. But it doesn't it doesn't have anything to do with Godfather to the movie, right? Or does it? Uh, well, I think yeah, it does. It does. It does. Have, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, it's going to relate. I don't know how closely it's going to mm-hmm. relate. Um, I'm sure that they'll try to use key scenes. I mean, that's what they did. I, I played through the original game, and it was sort of like um, you were like the Forrest Gump right. of Hitman. <laughs> right. Like you, 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 yeah. you, just, you, you like you like you like happened upon every famous scene right, in right, Godfather right. just because you <laughs> just happened to be this dude who was there. Uh-huh. No, you're right. In uh, fact, aren't you the guy who? Um, seriously, you're the guy who like has to kill the horse. You wielded you? black hand technology, right? <laughs> oh, what? don't start that. Right. No, yeah. don't you bring the? I think uh, you bring the horse to the guy's bed. Yeah. I think yeah. I I mean, they that. do. They come up yeah. with all these things where yeah, you're yeah. like the guy who's sort of behind the scenes, yeah, making you're all the Rosen Crantz and Guildenstern. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. but like as a game, what's interesting about it is I really enjoy open world games that don't have like a strict mission structure, to where you can something like Stalker, where where you can just happen upon events and like d- approach things like like or like Crackdown, where you like go and you find the, that one part of town where yeah. you got to like lay siege and and do something big, and it's and it's really open ended. I think they're trying to do a lot more interesting stuff in that regard here because it's like this open-ended take over the city kind of game where you're competing against, you know, four or five other families mm-hmm. and you have all of the all of these sort of things at your disposal. You have uh, associates that you gain sort of RPG style. You go around recruiting guys. You got to have money to recruit them, but once you do, they have like sort of uh, attributes and powers that you can hmm. use against people you know some some of them might have like stealth kill abilities or like the ability to firebomb a store or whatever you can sort of manipulate all these things uh, as, as you're playing a more traditional like crime you know open world game and it looks like it could be pretty good mm-hmm. they should have fun. your character yeah. from the first godfather game and make a <clears throat> joke of it like like yeah. he's the like oh that'd be funny he's where yeah. he ends up in every crew like you know if you get the fire bomb squad like that guy ends up with them somehow and then like every time you like that dude <laughs> is there no matter who, <laughs> yeah, who who you're dealing with or like yeah he's just in there or every shit job they should just say hey let's have this guy do it mm-hmm. yeah yeah um, um i we got to play a little bit of uh battlefield heroes at the ea event i'm waiting this week we're getting like i think this evening we're getting our beta invites finally so we'll be able great. to talk about in greater depth <clears throat> it's kind of difficult i mean in these events we, you there's a line of people you sit down mm-hmm. for five minutes and then like they kind of like politely indicate that okay your time's up like let mm-hmm. someone else sit on it and it's like okay wh- whatever but there's I mean, always what, some what, dude though who's sitting there like he's at his fucking arcade you know in his neighborhood to some fat ass oblivious there for like 25 minutes everyone yeah. behind yeah him. yeah and, but like I was the, able to see in that time that, I mean, it seems like they're really going all out now with the character customization stuff. Mm-hmm. Like even where, whereas at one point it seemed like it was all within the sort of this like fiction that they're creating. So it would be like soldier like gear mm-hmm. you know, that, that resembled that of the gear from the allies or the axe or something. And now it's like, it's gone to the soul caliber level where, I mean, <laughs> you'd be wearing like a chicken wing for a, a hat or yeah, something, yeah. you know I mean? It's like. It's just in. They're yeah, they're going out of their way to show the, yeah. all the crazy shit in there. So now. yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I assume that that's what's going. But they to might work as well, well, right? I, they I, might as well, and and that stuff is like pro- right now. That stuff has proven so successful. You know, mm-hmm. I, can, I just did this preview for Crisis Warhead, and you know, it got me thinking about. I, mean, I hadn't anticipated. If you asked me like two years ago what the trend in multiplayer shooters would be, it definitely seemed like everything was taking the battlefield direction. And then so many games did do that. Last season we had so many front lines and UT3 and 
quake wars and, and all these things and none of those like was a breakthrough crisis power struggle mode included and then, of course what is is call of duty 4 and mm -hmm. team fortress and both of those games team fortress now it's kind of been an afterthought I mean, i'm not saying team fortress is popular just because it has achievements and stuff but i don't think it's hurt likewise for cod4 mm -hmm. it's a fantastic game it's just they're also the simplicity and like the streamlining of those games is mm -hmm. a huge part of that success but it's also proven popular people like to just keep playing so they can rank up you mm -hmm. know and like given that to simplify Battlefield and give people a ton of shit to keep playing for I mean it, it seems pretty for wise for a game like Call of Duty I always wonder or even Team Fortress what is what is the financial incentive to wanting uh, players to continue to play when they're not paying like a monthly fee or <laughs> the, something they, they, they do Oh, sorry, studying. They do sell map packs occasionally, and I have on on the 360. I've purchased the map packs for ten dollars. Like they did over a million downloads of their ten dollar map pack, which oh, means really? they made like ten million dollars off of something they didn't actually have to produce a physical like yeah. media for. So, In the long run, it's a good question. The, the recognition, yeah. no, well, like look, say for what happened with the Halo games, right? Mm -hmm. If people are playing your game from the time it comes out until the time the sequel comes out. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they other people are hearing them talking about it, and they're like, it just becomes established in the popular mentality. And every subsequent sequel sells more and more because then people are like, oh, I'll jump on now. That's the game everyone plays. That's the one that, if there's a sitcom on TV, that's the one the kids are playing in the background. That's the one that grandma knows mm -hmm. the name of. And, yep, yep. I mean, you just you, you build that kind of devotion, that you know, dedicated fan base, and yeah, the name it, recognition it alone the, is is priceless. I mean, I don't know how many times in the last six months, eight months, where like, you know. Other parents or like relatives who with with kids would say like, my son wants this game. I need you to help me because you're the gamer in the family. It's some World War Two thing, and I go, oh, Call of Duty, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it every yeah. time. Hmm. And it was amazing that that game had achieved that kind of it had hit that level. Yeah, yeah. You know? The other thing is that you you persuade say there's someone who hasn't bought Team Fortress yet, right? And maybe this is the month where, like, because that's what all their friends are still playing, mm -hmm. and they hear that there's all this new stuff out, then they'll buy it now. So, I mean, yeah. they have a long tail on them. And people yeah, I mean, especially with Team Fortress, it's a little bit mysterious to me yeah. because you get everything for free. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, but I, I guess, you know, they keep they keep this buzz about it. I mean, I do see every fucking time there's any sort of update about Team Fortress, it's at the top of Dig. So, I guess mm -hmm. they get lots yep. of... You know the thing that was fucking weird for me about this whole, like, the orange, the success of the games in the orange box, notably Team Fortress and Portal, is that, like, I always, I was always a Team Fortress classic player, and I, like, this is, like, a group of people, and you had this one thing for it. But then it became, like, it's like the freaks fucking stole it. And, like, <laughs> I mean, I don't mean that, like, we were, well, we were, in this case, it's like, you know, it, it just moved, hand, it changed hands. And, and what I mean by freaks is it's like, you see, I mean, people that, like, just like hentai and anime type stuff, you know, where like they're drawn Team Fortress characters like having sex with each other and Portal like getting like these shitty Portal ta tattoos, and you'll see like their web page, and it's like you know how it is when you go to some space on the internet and like it's just inscrutable to you. You just really have no understanding of like who's doing this. It's like you an try ancient to figure scroll. It out. Yeah. yeah, and you're like the stuff that, that they that they're doing is just so alien to you, and like to totally that that's the group that just just grabbed a hold of both portal and team <laughs> fortress too it's really weird and you see all these like shitty comics and stuff with them in it and like i mean we talked about it before the whole like the cake is a lie thing it's like i don't want to hear about the cake anymore you know like <laughs> <laughs> to some extent i guess that's kind of another reason that valve keeps up the thing of that going though because i know that they do pretty well with the merchandising for both mm -hmm. portal and mm -hmm. team fortress too so I'm sure that doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah, they can get even more into that. I mean, how many companion cubes can you sell? They, I mean, they always sell out of them as soon as they get them. They, so at this like point, amazing. they could make a companion cube fleshlight, and I'm sure it would sell. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> right now, someone, someone, is, someone, someone, is, someone is doing is, that right is, now because like, you just... Someone has out, done you know? it already. At some point, WoW had put <laughs> companion cubes in. They put, like, a little thing, like a little sort of homage to the com companion cube in their game. I still, I still admire, was... I still admire, like, how there were these strangely resonating things in that game that people just couldn't let go, like the companion cube. The companion mm -hmm. cube was really, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't want to be too predictable because I always bring up, like, Asperger's all the time, but I mean, that's the case where I kind of wonder. When <laughs> someone tells you that they felt more for the companion cube than they did for, like, you know, the Little Sisters and Bioshock or whatever, all these other Alex and Half-Life, it's like, yeah, you really gotta wonder at that point, you know. Who said that though? I always, I've I thought seen the that companion cube was over just a and joke. over again. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I, I liked it. I as thought a it was joke. funny. Yeah, 
yeah. yeah. It was a great joke, but I've seen that I all over. I felt nothing for do companion a, Do cube. some searching for it, you know? Really? I mean, I've seen tattoos where on one guy's arm, he'll have a uh, companion cube, and it says love, and on the other, there's a cake, and it says lies beneath it. I mean, it's pretty... It's, that is... No. Pretty, I'm st- really? That's real. That's real. People wow. do a lot of sad things to themselves. Well, I was looking through your Twitter page. Like Twilight, Twilight was, tattoos. Yeah, Anthony's thought about getting Star Wars tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> actually, he, he actually has it planned that he wants to get the symbol of the Old Republic and the New Republic on his forearm. Oh, <laughs> my Lord. Yeah, that guy's a loser. I, I, Cut I, off I, Anthony's, witnessed. like, pay right now so you don't fund that, like, trip to the tattoo department. <laughs> I don't pay the dude. He does. I, I witnessed, thanks to, your, <laughs> thanks to your Twitter page, a picture of some naked guy with bad tattoos having sex with an ATAT or whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> I was like, I've never looked at Sean's Twitter page. Right. It's good. It's well, actually, there you go. It's, it's probably it's the best aggregator I know of for uh, for like content for uh, for pictures. Like uh-huh. you don't have an, videos. enough videos right now, but it's it like a depends. lot of pictures. You need to go to my YouTube favorites for that. Yeah. Yeah. You are saying your YouTube favorites are a better aggregator? They're, they're a repository than... of everything stupid you could want to see on the internet. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. I need I need stuff like that because I I sort of uh, don't have any like good places to pick up um, stupid content for the internet right now. So uh, Sean is my whole conduit for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I stopped. It's dried up because I just put it on the, on the Twitter no. thing. So like I feel. So bad. wait, all those photos you've been aiming me is that all the stuff that ends up on the Twitter? Some of those have been. Yeah, yeah. everything like that. Like so. Yeah, I did aim you. Like that like, billboard with that says that look out, there's a cop hiding behind there. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a cop hiding behind that billboard. Yeah, exactly. that it's awesome. like that's where the uh, slow down. That's where the slow cop down. hides. That's where the cop yeah. hides. Yeah. <laughs> that was the old great. one. Sometimes uh, like uh, since I just started, I've been. Yeah. Dating it with like all the classics. Well, if we're if we're um, dried up, I think we should all go out. Wait, wait, I gotta read this off. thing. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm reading. I gotta read something to you from the campaign trail. Okay. When we end, Anthony's yeah. volunteered to eat a mouthful. No, of, dude, uh, I've been <laughs> I've, I've been slumping in my chair because I've been seriously like feeling sick to my stomach. Yeah, I've had since yeah, puke. That, that, how many, that puke one was bad. How, how many can you put? How many like all at once could you eat? Oh god! See, you they do even it. look nauseating. Just look at those colors. Especially yeah. the rotten egg. None ones. of those colors are the like rotten natural egg human the colors. The worst. Okay, go ahead and read okay. the thing. And right so, now, I'll get Robert a handful okay, of so rotten Okay, so this uh, <laughs> this was uh, forwarded to me um, today. Uh, this is from uh, the campaign trail. Uh, this is actually a serious uh, news item. This comes from CNN. Um, the, I guess uh, McCain. And let me just preface this: this is not. There's no political. Uh, angle here that I'm working here. I'm just saying this was in the news, okay? Um, uh, on the campaign trail, I guess McCain has been telling the story about how when he was a POW and in a moment of, for like inspiration or whatever, he, he drew a cross in the sand, okay? And that, that inspired him. So after he told the story, he's gotten some shit from the left saying that he actually swiped this story from Alexander Solzhenitsyn, that he told a story oh, like shit. this. Before and that McCain told the story in a different context in another way, basically that it's not true or implying that um, that it might, you know, that he's fudging well, the it. The Nietzsche version is is to reciting like writing poems in his head in the Gulag. Well, I, there was something about a cross too. So anyway, uh, McCain has an aide named Michael Goldfarb, and on the on his website he he has a blog, and he wanted to comment on uh, the fact that the left was giving McCain shit for this. So here's what this guy wrote. <laughs> in, re- in response to this, uh, quote, it may be typical of the pro-Obama Dungeons and Dragons crowd to disparage <laughs> a fa- fellow countryman's memory of war from the comfort of mom's basement. <laughs> but most Americans have the humility and gratitude to respect and learn from the memories of men who suffered on behalf of others, he wrote. It's and such then a he just goes on, like, what the fuck? Of the swift boat thing with, <laughs> with Bush and... I mean, yeah, this has nothing Perry. to do with Republicans or Democrats or whatever. Like, <laughs> but just the dungeon. That's the, the d- angle he took? <laughs> like, he must there, be reacting there, to the a, whole, like, There's a dispute thing. about this yeah. story, and he's saying... He's calling. He's saying the pro-Obama Dungeons and Dragons crowd. He must like be, I don't even get that. I don't know. He must be thinking like Dig or something like that. That yeah. would like pile onto a story like that. And who also like the top story right underneath that is like new level of Super Mario. But it's Brothers. still hilarious. I heard. Yeah. I heard Obama's not a big fan of fourth edition. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, they, uh, the the uh, epilogue to that is just that um, apparently some angry D and D nerds <laughs> wrote. 
you know, spam this guy or sort of spam the McCain website. And of now there's actually did. an apology up saying, you know, my apologies to all the hardworking Dungeons and Dragons fans <laughs> in America. A lot of those D D <laughs> fans are also card carrying NRA members and stuff. Well, they have like Mac tens and stuff. Yeah, that's the other part. It's like, you know, world. the D and D fans I knew tend to be fairly conservative, a lot of them. I, it just seemed like a weird like how do you make that leap? Like, I can see disputing the story or disputing the uh, disputing the people disputing it. I can see that, <laughs> that there would be some controversy over whether this guy, whether McCain, you know, what the origin of this sort of story is. Yeah. But, to th- but to say, it's to, dated, to lump Dungeons and Dragons into that, what? It's just a dated, like, dweebs, way of saying being out of touch with reality, but instead of, like, World of Warcraft or something. Yeah, but you would, but I think you would say, like, the, like ho- the Hollywood liberals or something, some more, like, expected I, I think target. it's just, like, McCain and his crowd are so disconnected from the internet that their their whole, like, vision of it is like, oh, it's those Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> kids again. <Yeah. laughs> it's like it's 1974 like, it's like all over 70s, again. Yeah. 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 Okay, Robert, I now, your punishment hard. for that political comment that we don't welcome on the show is to eat a handful yeah. of these. It's uh, it's butter, popcorn, or, and rotten egg. So I, I, I don't think I could do rotten egg. I could do... Yeah, you look kind of ill after the rotten egg. Just grab a handful of that stuff and eat. See, see what right. happens. Are you really going to do it, though? Oh do it? Why? Sean is... I can't believe yeah. he gets people to it do this could, shit. That's a good mix. That's well, a good mix. Well, because sometimes it All could right. make like a new it, flavor. Skip like says he's not eat. cleaning up your vomit. Okay. Skip did bring us I got, all water. I've got, I've got like six of these. All right. Oh, jeez. Oh. He had moldy like cheese in there. On air Harry Carey. Earwax. But it could have fruit and popcorn too. Like, what if like? He's not speaking. Ryan, you're a gambling man. What are the odds that he got nothing but delicious flavors? <laughs> <laughs> they're they're really not very slim, good. Slim as hell. <laughs> Who was the character in wow. Willy Wonka that started turning colors and then blew uh, up like I a were, blueberry? Huh? That's if, like if, Robert if, Ashley right now. If I if I were an onophile, oh, I would this. say that I detect hints of black pepper. The smell coming out of his mouth makes me want to throw oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some some vomit. <laughs> Um, <laughs> some skunk, and then something that's actually sweet. I think I got that's a coconut. good. You skunk was in there and was coconut. Here, oh. I get you a baby wipe to Here, wash dude. it down with. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna swallow it. There's a baby wipe right there. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll eat it. I'll eat it. All right, this is. I think this podcast go. is over. Booger, taste I think we're done here. We're done. Oh, it's coconut. Keep eating your boogers and your baby wipes. I'm eating black pepper right now. We'll see you next week. Bye.